Thanks for joining, guys. Um, this is a uh, presentation, really uh, an introduction on ANZUS Discovery. Um, ANZUS Discovery is a rebranding of the Space Claim line, essentially. So essentially what they've done is they've taken um, all the basic ANZUS analysis solvers and meshing um, products and have integrated them into the Space Claim um, package. What's very unique about ANZUS Discovery is, one, the speed. Um, they've really re-implemented the solvers into a video card based solving tool set. Um, and so it's made the product extremely fast. And secondly, they've implemented the interface into the space claim interface. So those of you who are familiar with space claim, um, are going to recognize that it's still got the same ease of use interface and familiarity as it did before along with the um, analysis um, into it as we go through already. Um, I'd like you to save your questions till the end of the presentation, if that's okay. We're going to start with myself giving a PowerPoint, and then after that, uh, we'll have Ali um, present the software. Um, feel free to post questions in the chat um, dynamically, if you like, and we will make sure to address them at the end of the presentation. Okay, so first of all, what's the state of simulation today? Well, first of all, right now, um, the technology in typical analysis packages is still fairly advanced. So for basic users or entry level users, um, there's a fairly big learning curve in order to be able to learn the tool effectively enough to be able to use it. So basically what you currently have right now is in the product development um, world, you basically have your engineers slash uh, designers um, that are basically a big large group of essentially CAD jockeys or CAD users. And then you have a few simulation experts on the side that are basically doing the simulation for different um, uh, people within the group. Um, there's a lot of back and forth between the engineer designers and the simulation people. So there's a little bit of a bottleneck there. What that really means is when we're getting a design, what's happening is basically the designers are doing the conceptual and preliminary phase of the design without really fully understanding what the impacts are of the different design um, engineering parameters, such as like what are the different um, requirements, environmental requirements, etc. And so they're trying to capture that simulation in the detailed design phase. The problem is, is by the time you get to the detailed design phase, you essentially have to go back to the conceptual phase sometimes because something may have been missed. Introducing ANSA Discovery, that's what we're really trying to address here with this product. Um, we're very excited to actually be focusing more on this product this year, actually. Um, it uh, had less maturity two years ago, but uh, it really, truly is a mature product now. Um, and the whole point of the product really is upfront simulation. A lot of other uh, companies tout uh, saying they have upfront simulation because they have integrated simulation within their tool set. But to be honest, the simulation is uh, complicated and slow. ANSYS Discovery has really tried to simplify the interface, really tried to remove a lot of the unnecessary um, complexity such as complex connections, complex boundary conditions, and really tried to simplify and remove the meshing so that way you are able to like set up a model very quickly just to get an order of magnitude idea of how the simulation is working. And they're also trying to um, make it uh, fast. The other thing is uh, they've implemented geometry preparation, for, geometry preparation for simulation. Space Claim had already been working on this before. Uh, be able to remove um, any unnecessary features such as small... Um, such as small uh, features or um, or uh, different types of um, um, uh, volumes you might want to put in. You might even want to add in additional CAD models within the geometry. And so you can really go in and modify the geometry on the fly inside the uh, environment without having to worry about um, any um, structure tree or any form of like um, uh, meshing conflicts. And really, like I mentioned before, that's the whole point of discovery is the real-time design exploration. When we say real-time, 
obviously nothing is actually real time, but because ANZUS has decided to put the discovery package, um, the basic ANZUS discovery on the video card, we're basically solving um, uh, solve times of, of 1,000 to 10,000 times faster than typical solvers. So for example, a um, half hour um, typical CFD uh, solve uh, typically only takes a few seconds in space claim um, ANSYS discovery. And that really is a game changer when it comes to conceptual design for doing uh, feasibility studies. So going back here again, the key features one, um, we can bring in many different types of CAD geometry into the environment. That's one thing that space claim really touted in the beginning was be able to have um, interface between the different types of CAD models. So you can do um, really like um, a CAD free uh, environment. It doesn't matter which type of CAD system you have because it's a direct modeling system. You're able to actually modify the geometry within the native environment. Because of that, we can do geometry preparation. And when you're doing simulation, geometry preparation is important. Sometimes you want to be able to connect models together. Sometimes you want to be able to change geometry to be able to understand how different um, changes will affect the model, etc. And really, we're talking about live and high fidelity simulation. Basically, that's really it, it is in a nutshell. It's really just the space claim interface with the um, real-time simple um, analysis inside the environment. Okay, so first of all, um, we have obviously native support. We can bring in many different file types, um, as mentioned, uh, Creo, SolidWorks, Katia, Autodesk. Um, there's a few others that aren't mentioned here, like Inventor. Um, we can bring in NX, et cetera. So, but we can bring in many different types of CAD environments along with um, integration with the ANSYS products. Uh, secondly, we can do geometry preparation. For those of you who are not familiar with space claim, it's very easy to modify the geometry on the fly. If you want to adjust any features, it doesn't matter where the model comes from. It can come from any CAD environment. Because it's a direct modeling um, environment, we can directly modify the geometry right real time on any sort of dumb solid coming in. That includes IGIS or STEP or any sort of um, non-parametric featured models coming in. Uh, thirdly, which is what we're most excited about, is we can do live physics simulation. Why is this important? Because when you're designing, you might want to understand how the changes are going to affect different aspects of the design. Maybe you're worried about airflow. Maybe you're worried about uh, the part being strong enough. Maybe you're worried about like um, cooling with thermals. Uh, maybe you just want to do an optimization on the model. But the point is, is that you can actually go in and uh, like play or adjust different features on the model and play around really to be able to conceptualize and create different scenarios to be able to understand how it's going to affect your model. And you can, you know, you could make PowerPoint presentations to present to your team to do feasibility studies. You can do different types of scenarios and give different model concepts to be able to come up with different advantages, disadvantages. The whole point is live physics simulation. So you get able to modify these and this truly is a real-time video. This, these live simulations are done in seconds. Next is um, high fidelity simulation. So what they've recently implemented in, um, in the environment as well is they've implemented the full suite of high-end simulation inside the environment. This is a new feature that they brought in last year. Um, we're pretty excited about this. Uh, what this allows you to do is beyond discovery, which is your um, uh, basic analysis real time, you're actually able to go in and uh, verify your model using very high accuracy analysis. So um, in here, if you want to go and get into detail, once you finalize your model, you can actually go in and actually start doing simulation on the model that is basically being done um, at a full detailed level. The point of this is that this allows also an entry of not just uh, basic designers or engineers to come in, but it also allows um, simulation experts to come in and really get like high definition results. Really at the end of the day, um, this is a multi-physics tool. We can do structural, um, fluids, thermal, and the new feature 
in discovery, which we're excited about, is topology optimization. For those of you who are not familiar with topology optimization, um, uh, Ali will, I'm sure, cover it uh, quickly. But basically, it's a way for you to be able to come up with design concepts uh, without having to worry about what the geometry changes are going to be. It will The models will actually be generated for you in the environment. Um, basically, ANSYS Discovery, um, one is for design engineers. Um, you can obtain uh, simulation results by yourself. Um, basically, you can come up with designs at a much lower cost because you're able to, to, to um, do feasibility up front. And, um, and basically, you're able to uh, reduce time for, for simulation data, um, basically be, be able to accelerate your time to market. For simulation experts, the whole point here, first of all, is um, you're not sending uh, basic simulation um, requests to your simulation team. The simulation experts typically want to focus on very complex models and very complex um, ideas. Uh, being able to do feasibility studies is sometimes something, that, something that's overlooked because there's not enough time or the simulation experts are just too expensive to be able to, um, to engage in. So you can be able to come up with a rapid upfront simulation with live physics and be able to increase that simulation speed upfront without having to worry at the detailed design phase. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, now I'm going to end the uh, presentation here. I'm going to hand it over to Ali. Ali's going to be presenting the software. Again, as mentioned before, if you guys have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat and we will address them at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ben, for uh, your presentation. So I'll quickly go ahead and share my screen. So please let me know if you can view my screen. Yeah. All right. All right. So as Ben told, uh, today we are going to go through the ANSYS discovery. I'll just quickly go ahead and load up a model. So let's uh, load up a model. As you can see within discovery, as we have in space claim, we can load up model from any CAD interface. Say so if you have directly, you can invert, uh, insert a geometry from inverter from SOLIDWORKS, from SGP, or you can take geometries from CATI as well. So let's select all and load up a model. So let's say uh, we are sitting in a design review meeting, all right, and we are designing a component of an electric vehicle. Say our firm is designing an electric vehicle and we are in a stage of developing a traction motor. So this is a basic structure that we have developed using a 3D CAD software or using space claim. And now we need to see how this uh, structure or this part behaves. So currently in our traction inverter, there will be multiple electrical component. The main component will be the IGBTs. So here I have one IGBT at the top and three IGBTs at the bottom, as you can see in the gray. So these IGBTs used to handle a huge amount of current due to which they will get quite warm. All right. So we need to dissipate the heat of the entire component. So we want to see within this meeting how we can leverage ANSYS discovery to get the results within seconds. So let's say uh, we know that these IGBTs will em emit a heat of 400 watts. So I'll just quickly go ahead and give that boundary conditions within discovery, say 400 watts. Again, I'll just go ahead and give the similar conditions to for other IGBTs. Once I have given the conditions, it, it will automatically detect that it is, a, it is a thermal simulation. And over here, it will automatically give a convective heat transfer coefficient. Let's give it something which is normal and at uh, say 35 degrees centigrade. Once I have my boundary conditions set, all I need to do is just uh, click on this button solve. And now you can imagine if we are just designing this component and we are using the tools that are available with the CA engineers, it might take him two, two weeks to two months to just get the answer for this, uh, this very problem. Because at this stage, we are just designing and if we can get the rapid feedback, we can change the design and make a much more 
better design which can be sent to a CA engineers further on when we have completed the complete conceptual phase. So here we have our results within two seconds almost we have the result that the maximum temperature is 1231 degrees centigrade. So it's quite much right. So at this temperature our electrical components as well as the other components around this traction inverter might get damaged. So what we need to do we need to just decrease this temperature to a certain level say we want our temperature range of 70 to 75. So what we need to do we need to have some kind of a heat exchanger within it sometime some kind of a fluid which will remove the heat within this uh, traction inverter. So within our design stage we have created a channel through which fluid will flow and it will extract the heat right. So let's say at this point I want to have an approximation that the fluid is flowing at a constant temperature at 25 degree centigrade and it is not the temperature is not getting changed at it move through the channels. So with this approximation I can move forward and uh, give the condition but as you might note that in selecting these all faces it might take quite a large amount of time. So within discovery we have space claim uh, under the hood so we have multiple selection features over here. So if I just want to select these surfaces I can just select these uh, capping faces and just give the seed face. So with this tool I am able to just select these all surfaces just by giving the capping faces. Now I can just use the temperature and give it 25 degrees centigrade. Now again I just need not to click the play button because it is already running all I need to do is to click on contours and I can see uh, what the temperature is. So currently the temperature with the fluid flowing say of 25 degree centigrade has come down to 70 degree. So if I just go to the monitor and see over here it has been dramatically reduced right. So this tells us that we are on a right part in designing this traction inverter. Let's say after this result I, uh, we want to have a much more cleaner result say much more refined result. So what I can do currently we are in explore mode. So in explore mode as Ben told you the ANSYS discovery works on GPU. So it leverages the GPU cores and gives uh, results within seconds to minutes. Although if we want to have much more refined uh, solution I can just move on to the next mode that is the refined mode. In refined mode the, un the solver change to ANSYS mechanical or fluent depending on the type of simulation we are doing. So with refine mode comes uh, various features that we can use. Say previously we have applied a constant temperature of 25 degree centigrade right. So like we want to make a more ideal condition so I'll just delete this temperature and want to flow fluids within it. So for flowing fluid you might be aware that we need to have certain kind of volume through which the fluid will flow because how will a software understand in which volume the fluid need to be flowed. So we need to extract the volume. So at this point in time uh, what CA engineer will do is go back to a CAD engineer or CAD designer and ask him to extract the volume. Although within discovery we can do it with simple clicks. I'll just go to volume extract. Again select the bounding faces. Give the seed face and just click the check mark. So if I just hide others. I can see the volume has been extracted. So it is as easy as I have, I have shown you. So all these things I am doing is are doing live that is nothing has been recorded. This, these things are really really fast. So I can now move on to just create a fluid flow. So let's say our fluid is flowing at a at this channel it is going into this and it is an inlet. Let's give a velocity of 2 meter per second and a temperature of 25 degrees centigrade. Let's assign this one as an outlet. Click the check mark. So with this we have given the heating as well as we have given the fluid flow. Now moving on as I told you that within this we are using the ANSYS tried and tested mechanical and fluent solver so we have added capabilities such as we have mesh control say I want to vary the mesh initially in the explore mode we do not create mesh but as we are in refined mode 
we need to create match but it is automatically created by the uh, discovery so if say i want to just change the type of match that is going to create or i want to optimize the match uh, according to my model i can select multiple options given over here so say i want a match that is good in curvature proximity or both or we i want to have some fixed kind of a match within this also i have multiple uh, options to change the various parameters of a match so it's it's quite good and uh, quite a fast as well so let's select determine sizing automation for this another thing is we have a local mesh refinement say i want to locally enrich a certain part certain surface or volume of this part so i can just locally give the mesh size and press enter this is only we need to do give nothing else so it's quite easy to create a mesh uh, within discovery so moving forward in simulation options uh, we have multiple options say i want to change the kind of uh, uh, flow in flow that is happening say i want to stop the solution on engineering convergence depending upon my need i can change the convergence to numerical as well as if you want to monitor certain value upon which the convergence is needed to be based i can select that one as well let's keep it by default again we can specify modeling method within discovery we have multiple methods which we can uh, select currently turbulent k omega ssg model has been selected although if we need to select any other model we can do so quite easily within this uh, option we also have convergence setting which can be altered from here another thing to note within this model is that uh, as you can see the surfaces between these aren't uh, separate so for proper heat transfer within refine mode we need to have the, the surfaces which do have some kind of uh, separation right so again we need not to go to a cad engineer or to the cad program within uh, discovery we have the tools that we have in space claim that is we have imprint feature if i just go on imprint it automatically find all the imprints that we have within our uh, within our part and if i just click a check mark within a just single click we are able to create all the imprints now if i jo just go and select the surface these are separated now another thing to note over here is that uh, bonded connection have been automatically formed so we need not to worry about the bonded connection although if you want to change these connections we can do so uh, by going into the bonded connections and just select one of the connection and give the type that we want these uh, dots are showing the connections that uh, the bodies are having with different bodies and we can alter them according to our will within these options so this is what we have now let's quickly go ahead and run the simulation for within refine mode it will use uh, the cpu power so it is a bit slower so it will take about 5 to 6 minutes to just complete the model so instead of waiting for that i have just uh, uh, completed a solution within here uh, before the webinar so i'll just show over here the contours so these are the contours of temperature that we are having so if i just go to monitor and see that uh, maximum temperature as you can see we need not to remember what are the various temperature with different configuration that we had there is a monitor feature that will monitor all the changes in parameters uh, within by making the changes so initially we had 1200 degree centigrade after we applied a 25 degree centigrade of uh, boundary condition we get 70 now as the fluid will flow within the within the region it will get heated up right so its efficiency will not be that much of uh, the initial ideal condition that we had assumed so now the temperature is 75 degree centigrade so it's quite good uh, as compared to 1200 so let's see what we can improve within this uh, traction inverter if just if i just go in velocity and just hide this and this body I can see the fluid flow. So if I just uh, zoom in a bit, 
I can see the velocity is not uniform through, throughout this channel. In the topmost part, the velocity is quite less as compared to the uh, other walls, right? So I guess it is a it is some kind of arrangement that we can make so that uh, the velocity is more uniform. So I'll just quickly go ahead and create a new solution in which we will leverage the explore mode. So let's again just hide this and give the fluid flow condition that we had of two meter per second of inlet and an outlet. So if I just click a button, it will automatically start the solution. As you can see that everything is happening on the go. I just click the play button, a solve button and the solution has been started. And the results are quite dynamic in nature. As you can see, everything is shown in a clear and crisp manner so that anyone even with with a very low level of experience with CAE can understand this. So as you can see over here, these areas are such that there are recirculation. So these within these areas, the recirculation will not cause the proper heat transfer within the traction inverter. So let's say we want to improve our design. So what I can do is I can just go back and redesign this thing or I can just try something within the discovery interface. Let's say we, we choose the second option. So within discovery, we can just design something. So let's just hide this and go to sketch mode. Let's say I was seeing some kind of recirculation. So let's create a vein to just direct the flow in certain, certain by certain parts. So I'll just create a new line and just try to create a vein over here. So this thing is all we are doing within discovery interface. We need to go back to our CAD interface to do these kind of edits. And it's quite easy. So we have our line segment. Now I can just offset multiple lines from here. Say I want another vein at 6 mm. Again, another at 6 mm and one more at 6 mm. Once I have these, I can just move out of the tool and use the pull tool to create a surface out of this line segment. Let's select all of these and create a surface out of this. Once I have the surface, I can just create volume by selecting these or surface and again within the pull tool i'll just move a bit and i'll create create a wall so the veins have been created i'll just use the combine tool to just combine all these solids within our traction inverter so now we have the veins Again, if I just go back and click solve, I'll have my results uh, as soon as it will find something. So, so results are just loading up. I can just see the flow within this. So as you can see, with the flow, we, we have reduced the recirculation. And if say I want to alter some of the parameters, say I want to alter the uh, length of this channel. So I can just go within this and select this surface and go to the pull tool and change its length to see how it will affect the solution on a whole. Again, it will start solving and within few seconds, we will start to get results. So it is quite fast. As you can see, the results are quite, quite uh, uh, easy to interpret. So anyone can see what's happening inside the solver. Another thing to note is that uh, 
when I have made the changes, I need not to again go ahead and create uh, the volume that we have created, right? So this volume has automatically, automatically uh, uh, know that there have been veins created, so it will automatically create a path for the fluid. So let's say now we know that we are heading in our right path. So I can just go ahead and sub create something more, more, uh, 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 more light veins. So I've created a model with uh, such a model. So I can just go and update it with veins one. Like this. So these are the channels that I have created. Uh, within space claim. So now I can again just go to prepare and extract the volumes and see how my design is responding. I'll just click a check mark. I have extracted the volume and now as I have replaced the geometry, I need not to apply the conditions again. I just need to replace the location and tell the software these are the new locations for the inlet and this is the new location for the outlet. And again, just tell the solver where we need to solve. Just start solving. So yeah, so as you can see, this design has been dramatically uh, change the way we think right so now we have a uniform velocity throughout the channel now the heat transfer between the IGBTs and the traction inverter through this fluid will be quite great because we have reduced the number of recirculation zone within it all right so that was really cool right so let's move on to topology optimization let's say this this one was something that we want to change the parameters within the geometry Let's say I have just a single part. Let's just go ahead and open a simple part like this. Say I have a bracket and we are thinking to optimize this bracket. Let's say we have manufactured this thing in the past. Now we are thinking to manufacture it using discovery so that we can optimize the shape of this very bracket. Now the thing to note is first we need to create a baseline simulation to see how our a bracket is functioning in a normal condition. So I'll just go to structures and create supports. So now in support, I have to create uh, four supports, right? There might be case that we need to create eight, 10 or 12 supports, all right? So it will be quite hard to one by one go and select these, these cylindrical holes. Although within discovery, you need not to do so because we have automated most of the stuff. So there is something called power select I just go into power select I can select all the holes with uh, 50 mm diameter in once right so if I just click over here and just give a hole 50 mm and just click check mark I select given the fixed support conditions for all the holes now let's go ahead and say give the force that we have let's say I do not want to give a force on a hole I want to give in different directions, say 0 in x, minus 100 in y, and plus 400 in z. Again, let's give similar kind of uh, condition in another one. All right, so let's click solve. And within seconds, we will again have the results for this static structural uh, problem. So if I just go to millimeter, displacement is quite less. Go to one minus stress, it is also quite less. So part is quite good, but let's see how we can optimize. So if I just go to optimization, I can just select what kind of optimization do I want. What, do I want to maximize the stiffness? maximize natural frequency or natural access, remove excess material. Let's say I want to just maximize the stiffness and how much volume reduction do I want? The other questions of the ask. Say I want a volume reduction of 55%. That's all we need to give. 
rest we just need to click that start button before going over there i'll just start a monitor to see if we can just monitor the mass how it's changing so here we have the mass with each iteration we will have a look how the mass is changing so let's start So it's, it has charted the solving process. Initially we have a mass of 366 kg. Let's see what a software comes up with. Now what it will do, it will try to eradicate the mass or volume from certain regions where the stresses are minimum and the deflections are none. So it will try to remove with each iteration it will get much more closer to optimize shape. We have started with a uh, 366 uh, kg of bracket now at about 15 iteration we are about uh, halfway reduced that is 176 kgs even in this if say within this uh, while the software is solving i want to change certain parameter say i want to i i've decided let's let's not put a support in these two points all right so over here i'll just give a fill command and will fill these holes Again, solver will start from initial condition and try to see where it need to remove mass. Solver is uh, this solver is quite smart. It knows that nothing is over here, no support, nothing. So it's better to remove all of the volume within this within this uh, region. So that's what solver will do. So it is uh, removing material. Uh, from where the stresses are none or quite uh, limited a minute or so to just give you a properly optimized body let's say i i am good with this i'll just pause the simulation and convert this optimized uh, body into a faceted body formula so now if i just hide the contours i have the faceted body as you can see, this isn't a clean body, although say I want a clean body, I want to just 3D paint it and test it. So what to do? Again, we need to do something? No, we know not to do. We just need to click on the facets and give the command to smooth in all the facets. So it will go and try to smooth all the facets. As you can see, all the facets have been smoothened. Even at this stage, we want to make changes, we can do so easily so if i just click over here it will select all the faucets uh, which are tangent and again i can use the pull tool to just increase or decrease the whole size it's beautiful right go ahead and save this file say i want to 3d print it let's save it as an SGL file on my desktop and now i'll just open up space claim to see how it's looking So yeah, here we have our component. We have started from a bracket and now we have optimized shape and we have reduced the uh, material from the region where the stresses are minimum. So that's all what I need to present today. If you have any questions, please go ahead and ask. Thank you. Thanks, Ali. That was great. You're welcome, John. Do you have any questions, John? Um, I guess one of the things would be the interface on Discovery. Um, it being <laughs> that Space Claim kind of is the geometry engine behind it. Yeah. Is there any way to align the interfaces to make Discovery look more Space Claim-like? Like I see they've got their own little basking. I'm just wondering why they're they're different. Mm -hmm. Just for consistency yeah, between them. Yeah, you, you can change the theme, but uh, it wouldn't be that much similar to space claim but yeah we do have a feature in preferences where you can just in settings where you can just change the color from black to white somewhat yeah i did that i was just wondering you know it's that kind of thing it's um it's uh why not be able to like you know it essentially is space claim why make it look different 
this is the choice that have been made by the development team yeah look a bit yeah. cooler i guess i guess yeah. it's kind of like microsoft you know they like every couple of years to change the interface to mess up uh human behavior <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, one thing I should mention, John, is the interface. I mean, I have talked to, I spoke to the developers, and the discovery, even though the interface is the uh, is similar, the platform was written on the NVIDIA platform, so um, it's a completely different development environment. Even though okay. you can bring in Space Claim files directly in, and it's based on uh, the original uh, code from Space Claim, um, they had to rebuild the kernel from scratch. So, um, okay. yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. So they just decided to make some changes. I guess um, one of the things I guess comes back to that question is that example you had with the heat exchanger and you added in the veins directly to the geometry. Could those veins have been a separate part in an assembly? And then maybe you had a couple of different vein designs. Could those have then been turned off and on within that volume geometry so you could quickly change up so that it's actually not part of the part, but they're touching so that they're in contact. Yeah, I haven't tried, but uh, I guess it will be possible if you can just uh, exclude those veins from including in the simulation and just include the one with which we want to simulate at that very particular moment of time. And it'll automatically upgrade the fluid volume, like to understand yeah. that there's veins yeah. there? Yeah. Okay. I tried to do it and I got an error like before, but I, again, I was just at early stages of, of using the software. So I'll, mm -hmm. give it, I'll give it another go. Yeah, I'll just try it at my end, and I'll send you a video of it, if if possible, yeah. Yeah, it could be really simple. It could be, like, even just fluid yeah. flow through a rectangular yeah. tube, and then you put a circular uh, interface, Depending you know, that, that gets an obstruction and seeing if it recognizes it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I got your point. I, I'll do that, sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I guess one of the things too is in the explore option, I noticed at the beginning um, when you were looking at the tracers, so a lot of the tracers went past the fins. Um, you know, they, they almost didn't recognize the uh, the wall interface there. Is that an mm -hmm. issue in explore and would be figured out and verify or? Yeah, John, for, for explore mode, because we are running teams and teams also consume a lot of memory. So because of that, the fidelity of my solution has been reduced quite dramatically. So if you can just uh, use the fidelity slider and move it to the right, so the size of a voxel that, that is created within uh, the explorer mode will be quite less. The less will okay. be the voxel, the less will be the resolution, so it will not be going past that pane. Okay. And, and it all depends upon the GPU card that we have within our system. The more powerful GPU, GPU we have, the more uh, less size of a voxel we'll get. So it's great. What um, we have a like a 3080 Ti on one of our desktops. Like, what would be the classic GPU that we'd be hoping for? Is Quadro make a difference from uh, going from the GeForce? Like, does it make sense to go to a CAD card, or is it okay to use the uh, the graphics cards, like the more gaming kind of like a 3080? Yeah, yeah. basically Discovery, Discovery prefers Quadro, but yeah, GTX okay. also works fine. The most the more memory you have a G Within the GPU, the less will be the voxel size. Okay. So, uh, more voxels will be getting into that very geometry, and the more defined will be your solution. Excellent. Thank yeah, you. It's not so much the speed, John. Like, sorry, Ali. Like, um, I, Ali knows this better than I do, but it's the key is the memory. The, okay. The, 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 okay. The higher the memory on the video card, the the, the lower the voxel. Um, okay. So so yeah. So the speed. I mean depends on how real time you want it to be but as you can tell it's pretty instantaneous unless you have really really complex models but really it's the it's the memory you'd want to focus on the cad the cad um the cad like um like verified cards um uh, they just make sure that you're not going to have conflict um you know so if you're buying a gaming card you might have conflict or there might be like a you know uh, part of the algorithm which isn't working possibly sometimes or not but it's 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 your own risk i guess um, okay. but like we use gaming cards and we don't have any problems with them so uh, mm -hmm. excellent yeah yeah do we have any other questions 
Any other questions from uh, anyone else in the panel or anything else like that? Anybody, uh, even when you want to type in the chat, uh, have any questions you wanted to mention? Anyone? Going once. Going twice. Okay, thank you guys for uh, joining us. Um, we really appreciate um, you guys attending this webinar. It's our first discovery webinar. It really was just an introductory to it. Um, we'll try to make some more specific um, discovery webinars in the future on specific topics. If you guys have any specific topics you want to um, uh, discuss, uh, please email Ash and let her know what topics you'd like to have covered, and we'll make sure we put them in the webinar queue to make sure we address them on future webinars. If you guys have any other questions beyond that, uh, please feel free to email Ash or Ali or myself um, for anything technical, and uh, we look forward to meeting you guys again in the future. Um, Ash will also be sending out a recording of this webinar um, after this uh, session. Okay? Anyways, be safe, guys. Uh, enjoy the day. Uh, thanks so much for attending, and um, we'll, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much for putting this together. It was great.